Hi, I'm John, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Lorenzo, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm Hideya. I'm from Institute of Culinary Education. I'm a level three chef. I think sushi is pretty hard to make. Let's be real; it's not something that you can just readily whip up at a moment's notice. What I like about sushi is you can interchange flavors. You can use seafood. You can use meats, just vegetables. So it's really up to you. Good sushi is rice eats body temperature and their fish eats cold. So the combination of body temperature and cold is so nice in my mouth. First up, let's make the rice. Here I have my sushi rice, and I let it soak for 30 minutes per the instructions on the back of the bag. And this has been rinsed about two or three times. I see that the water in the bowl is pretty clear, which means it's a okay, ready to go. Then drain like that. For this particular rice cooker, it actually calls for one part rice, rice one part water. water. It's on sushi. I just have to. <laughs> And once this comes to a boil, reduce it to a simmer for about 20 minutes. So while rice is cooking, let me make the sushi vinegar. Please use the rice vinegar. I like to make maple syrup and salt, sea salt here. They mix very well. Before you open the lid, play. Good. <laughs> so now that my rice is fully cooked. I'm gonna let it rest so that the rice reconstitutes、um, and gets to that nice texture、uh, to make the sushi rolls. Okay, let me、uh, fluff it up. I personally like to make a little garlic rice before I make my sushi rolls. Put a little bit of vegetable oil in. Fry up a little bit of fresh garlic. I'm simply gonna take the rice out of my handy dandy rice cooker. Mix it around a bit. So now I'm gonna add my seasoned rice, rice wine vinegar. vinegar. Sugar and salt that has been dissolved all together, and you can kind of see when I move the rice, it has that, you know, sticky gelatinous quality to it. So cover with damp towel because rice will be dry. All right, now that my rice is done, let's move on to the fillings. So here I have my crab meat. It is imitation style crab. I would say if you have crab, great, go get it. But this stuff is good. So these are nice big shrimp. They have been deveined, and I leave the tail on. Why? Fancy smancy, but that's how they do it. And what we're gonna do here is make a marinade: lemon juice, rice wine vinegar, salt, fresh garlic, and a few turns of some ground pepper. My feeling will be spicy tuna. So mix the mayonnaise, spicy sauce, and toasted sesame oil. Now, since it is Captain Hook, we <laughs> need to straighten this puppy out. How you do that is you take the end that has not been deveined and you score it a few times, and then you actually kind of break it, and then it gets to be that typical tempura length and straightened shrimp. Marinade. 10-15 minutes. I'm using green tuna today. I'm gonna cut the tuna, then mix with the sauce. My shrimp have been marinating for a good 20 minutes now. Next step, I'm gonna make the unbelievably easy tempura batter. Let's ninja this egg. Let's do my flour, cornstarch, and now I'm doing my final fizzy seltzer water. I like to use a carbonated liquid. That way. The batter is nice and fluffy when it fries. So I have a pot here full of vegetable oil. We're just going to dredge, dip, and <laughs> swim. I'm just looking for a nice golden brown. You'll see that it's nice and crinkly and fluffy. The batter is doing its magic around it. And next up, we're gonna cut our cucumber. cucumber. I like them kind of too thick. thick. So the scallion, I'm going to cut this into super super thin pieces. Soak in ice water bath. I also use radishes. Then cut into thin pieces. Then soak the radishes into ice water bath to make them nice and crispy. So next, we have a nice pear. This is a boss pear, nice and crispy. I also put avocado, avocado. inside of sushi. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slice these into very thin slices,、um, almost to match the consistency 
of the matchstick cucumbers. I'm actually gonna take the sesame seeds. I just wanna toast it a little bit. It's already turned a different color. Mix it, making wasabi from wasabi powder. Then, cover it to make the wasabi hot. I also slice even more tuna on top of the sushi. So when I slice the tuna in ango, I can make the bigger slice. All right, folks, it's time to assemble. First, wrap the bamboo mat with plastic wrap so that the bamboo mat is not sticky. And then just a bowl of water to wet your hands. You'll find that it gets very sticky, so the water just helps keep things nice and moist. So uh, this is your nori, which is actually algae. I'm gonna cut the nori in half, like that. Then place the nori on bamboo mat. Nori has two sides, shiny side and rough side. Always rice on top of the rough side. So I'm gonna put just a nice hunk of rice and I wanna have enough so that I can completely fill the square. Spread the rice all over the nori like that. So now I'm actually going to add both of my sesame seeds just for decor. So now that my rice is fully rolled out on the sushi mat, gonna go ahead and add our layer of nori seaweed. And then we're gonna do a little flip. Fluff it up. So now that I am on the uh, plain side of the nori, I like to put a little bit of wasabi. <laughs> you know, the more the merrier. So I'm gonna go ahead, lay in our lump crab meat. Spicy tuna mixture. I don't want it to be too, too thick because if it's really fat when you roll it, it's just gonna be impossible and then your roll will be like this. Then our cucumber. cucumber. I'm also gonna do my julienne pear added on. And then last but not least, avocado. avocado. Hello, tempura shrimp. Now that my feelings are in, time to roll this bad boy up. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab everything from the bottom. So the sushi mat, plastic wrap, and then I'm just gonna take it over the top. Hope to God this works out. Hold the bamboo mat and nori together, roll to the end of the filling. You need this kind of uh, empty space, acts like glue to stick the roll together. Open it, then roll to the end of the nori. Then shape, but no squeeze. We're just trying to make sure nothing's loose in there and trying to make sure it actually rolls properly. It looks like I overshot um, with the size of my nori and rice. That's okay. We're just gonna trim that. We'll use it for later. <laughs> oh my God, I hope there's not plastic wrap in it. All right, I'm gonna top my roll with an avocado. Slice it up and I'm going to fan it out but I need to make sure it's not going anywhere. Just gently, just gently, and then, voila! The sushi is ready. I'm going to put the tuna on top of the sushi, diagonal, so that there you can eat lots of fish. And now I'm gonna make a ponzu sauce. Very complicated, folks. Light soil, lemon juice, ponzu sauce. <laughs> There's my rolled sushi. Looks pretty good. Now the last task is to cut it up. Now I'm just using parchment paper to make it easier for me to cut. Then, cover with plastic wrap. Big trick that I learned from the interwebs. Because the rice is so sticky, it will stick to the knife, so I go ahead and moisten the knife with a damp paper towel. So when you cut the roll with your knife, cut the roll into eight pieces. Oh man. Ah. Nope, that didn't work. Let's go from the middle, maybe that'll help. Nope, still falling apart. Oh, these are Gigantosaurus. Let's leave them like Gigantosaurus. It's good. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's nice. Okie dokie. Then, shape it again. Then, remove the plastic. The sushi chef always show the uh, cutting edge. Now, I'm going to add garnish. Spicy sauce on top of the tuna so that it works as glue. Mix with the scallions and the radishes. Then place on top of the sushi. Now to finish off my sushi, I'm gonna top it with a little bit of sesame seeds. Gives it a little color. I don't think it adds that much taste, but look how pretty that looks. I like to add the edible flour. Then don't forget to add the wasabi. And here's my sushi. And this is my sushi. This is my sushi.
the sushi eats finger food. Pick up the sushi, then dip in the soy sauce just a little bit. Don't dip too much. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Yum. <laughs> Not bad. I can't do. I taste the rice, taste the crab meat. It tastes like a California roll. So I think job well done. Tuna, avocado, and the spicy sauce. A so good combination. And the, uh, the tuna, it's nice sushi quality and very fresh. Absolutely delicious. Honestly, I, I actually like this the best, the best thing so far that I've made. <laughs> Try it, you guys. Let's see how each of our chefs made their version of the delicious, versatile dish sushi. Rice is a grain composed of two starch fractions, amylose and amylopectin. Amylose is a linear polymer of glucose, and amylopectin is branched. All three of our chefs use traditional short grain sushi rice, which is lower in amylose and higher in amylopectin. This gives us a rice that's more sticky, since its branched molecules don't stack neatly due to having more space between the starch fractions. Lorenzo and Hideo rinse their rice, which removed some of the excess amylose, making theirs a bit less sticky than John's. John cooked his rice in a pot, which offered less heating consistency compared to other methods. Uh, good point. Lorenzo used a rice cooker, which was convenient since it regulated the temperature for him. The easiest way to make rice. He followed this with a quick, light fry, and then tossed his rice with a vinegar and sugar mixture. This all added a rich, sweet, and sour crispiness. Hideo cooked her rice in a one part rice to one part water ratio, shocking it in cold water prior to cooking. This shocking of the rice lowered the temperature very quickly, making the starch granules condensed and compact, limiting additional swelling. She seasoned her rice with rice vinegar, salt, and maple syrup, which added a sweetness and mineral quality. Yummy. John's fillings included protein in the form of imitation crab meat, crunchy cucumber, and rich, smooth avocado. Imitation crab is a blend of fish paste, usually made from pollock, with salt, seasoning, starches, and coloring. I'm guessing we use it because it's cheaper and more readily available than lump crab meat. Lorenzo made a marinade for his shrimp, adding a layer of acidity from the vinegar and lemon juice, and pungency from garlic and black pepper. He then dried his shrimp and sliced them, which ultimately made rolling the sushi easier. He added the shrimp to a tempura batter made from flour, cornstarch, and seltzer. The seltzer provides pockets of carbon dioxide that expand when heated, making for a very light batter. Cornstarch also makes a light tempura because it doesn't contain gluten and won't form stretchy networks for trapping carbon dioxide like you have with bread. Lorenzo fried his shrimp and added cucumber for crunch and pear for sweetness. Pears to me are just a treat. Hideo focused on her sushi grade tuna. Sushi grade is not a regulated term, but it implies that the fish is safe to consume when raw, according to the company it was purchased from. Tuna makes me tough. She added sriracha mixed with mayonnaise and a small amount of sesame oil. The mayonnaise acted as an emulsifier between the sriracha and the sesame oil, keeping the mixture smooth. All three of our chefs used a plastic covered sushi mat, which prevented rice from sticking to it and allowed for easier cleaning. They also all used nori. Nori is a sheeted seaweed from red algae and has a distinctive grassy, minerally salty taste. John laid his rice down first, followed by nori, while Lorenzo and Hideo put their nori down first, topped it with rice, and then flipped it so the rice was on the outside. Hideo cut her nori in half to ensure her roll didn't get too large or out of balance, making her sushi a much more manageable size than John and Lorenzo's. Uh, you can use the whole piece of nori, but the uh, roll will be this jumbo. They all carefully added their fillings, then rolled to the edge of their rice to form a roll, squeezing to make the sushi compact and firm. John sprinkled his sushi roll with sesame seeds, which added some color and texture, and served it with soy sauce. He also served pickled ginger, which is thinly sliced ginger root, cured in vinegar and sugar. Lorenzo topped his sushi with sliced avocado, which provided a nice creaminess along with pickled ginger and wasabi. He also made a ponzu sauce by combining soy sauce and lemon juice. This acidic and salty combination enhanced the overall flavor profile of his dish. Hideo put raw, fresh tuna on top of her sushi rolls, 
She complimented her spicy mayonnaise and sriracha mixture with wasabi, which she made from scratch by combining water with wasabi powder, allowing her to control its spiciness. The wasabi is not hot enough. So after a cup, the wasabi became super hot. She also added edible flowers, which are visually appealing, but don't add much in terms of flavor. No matter which way you roll it, make sure you try out some of these tips the next time you're preparing sushi.